crazy. What's that? Again? Okay. Hey, hey, it's Lori Alvarez and Amy Cruz. Oh my goodness. We're on again today. This is episode 30. Can you believe it's episode 30? I know 30. That's, that's a good number. That was my basketball number in high school. Oh, was it really? Mm -hmm. You'd think as your big sister, I'd know that. Yeah, it's okay. <laughs> I don't think I remember ever going to your basketball games. You went to one. Oh. And Nathan, I do remember it. And Nathan was just a little baby. He was so tiny. You were pushing Nathan and Nicholas in the stroller. You oh, guys, I remember that. Yeah, you you're right. You guys did come to one. I came to one. Yes. Okay, <laughs> excellent. I was a real great big sister oh, i went to one basketball are, game you are a great big sister i know with that said how was your valentine's day it was fantastic it was very low-key yeah and... you're a mama of two little yeah. boys under yeah. three four how four old are connor's four or oh and he brought me a beautiful little valentine's yes. gift i love my connor we made a delivery to auntie Lori. yes and thank you. and grandma yes Excellent. 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 So our last episode we talked about was for the love of real estate. And we talked so much about how and why we personally do real estate and the joy behind real estate. Yeah. I mean, I, I could say we really do love it. We love it. Yeah, I absolutely adore it. So Here's the deal, though. Everyone's talking about a crash. Oh, no, a crash. The crash of 2021. Oh, my goodness. Do, 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 do. So, so terrible. What are your thoughts on that? Oh, that's a good question, right? Uh, well, we don't have an inventory. I talk uh, yeah. about this every week, right? <laughs> I talk about this don't. every week. Uh, on my Facebook. So for all my podcast listeners, if you haven't found me on Facebook yet, I do a weekly inventory update every Wednesday on my Facebook page. Here's the reality. We don't have a name inventory. Yeah. So how can we crash? Right. There's, I mean, we have nothing. Yeah. So in 2011, they were talking about in 2011 when the market was um, at its height. Do you know how many houses we had for sale in San Dimas at that time? 2011? You don't know. I do. We had 110. You didn't even let me guess. I know. I was going to guess. I know, because I've told you the story many times. <laughs> <laughs> but we had 111 or 110 houses for sale. I just that's, remember. That's insane. Yeah. I couldn't even imagine. Imagine how, how much busier we would be if we had that many homes on the market. So today... When you look at the inventory we have in San Dimas, like 23. Yeah. When I, and Laverne was like 17. Yeah. A couple Nothing. Of years ago. It's crazy. No inventory. So is the market going to crash? Sure. The market can crash. We all have our crystal balls, right? We all yeah, are just fantastic totally. and think that we know when the market's going to crash. You can look at the historical <laughs> timelines too, right? Like, we are doomed for a crash because we're 10 years historically, like the markets continuously every 10 years or so done something crazy. And then COVID-19 hit. When COVID-19 hit, that wasn't due to our economy. No, no. It was a medical crisis. <laughs> wow. <laughs> so I was looking at the stats. Do you know the last medical, last huge medical crisis? was the flu of 1918. 1918? Yeah, the flu of 1918. You know how many people passed due to that flu? Oh, I don't know that number. Yeah, yeah. it's like, um, well, where's my stats again? It's like, five, let me see, give me my thing right now and I'll tell you exactly <laughs> what it was. It, it was crazy, the number of how many people, here it is, okay. See, I don't know everything by memory. Yeah, that's a uh, lot. 50 million. Thank you, Nolan. 50, 50 million, million oh from the 1918 gosh. flu, right? Wow. Those are the 19, that was the dates were 1918 to 1920. Currently, year to date, COVID-19 has experienced 2.4 million wow. deaths. 2.4. 
I did not know these numbers. Yes. Wow. Yeah. So 50 million as opposed to 2.4. Now, COVID-19 is second in the running, right? Because yeah. if you look, we're talking about all these different uh, um, emergency medical medical issues. The Asian yeah. flu yeah. was 1957 to 1958. Then there was the Hong Kong flu. That was 1968 to 1970. A million died. Then there was AIDS and HIV, right? 1981 to current. 35 million have died, right? So that was second in command right now. Second in command. Right. Right. And then there's SARS from 2002 to 2003. Less than 1,000 people died. Wow. Swine flu. Was in 2009, 200,000 died. Then there was Ebola in 2014 to 2016, 11,000 people died. MERS, M E R S, 2015, less than 1,000 died. And then COVID 19, 2019 to current, still going on, right? You mentioned your dad just yeah. got his, he just got his vaccination. Yeah. yeah. 2.4 million people. Oh that gosh. is what has interrupted our economy, right? Yeah. That. Yeah. And that is going to have a huge impact on the way we do life, a huge impact on the way we do real estate. Right. It has continuously. So I'm curious, did you look up what the market, the real estate market was like during those years of all of those? Oh, those are great questions. I would love to know yeah. what that looks like. Yeah. How those impacted. Right. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, we could look at the years on those, right? 2018, right. 2019. Uh, right. Then there was 2018, 2019, right? Uh-huh. I said one of them was. Yeah. yeah. So 2018, 2019, fantastic. Uh-huh. Fantastic and market. You also said 2015, 16, right? Mm-hmm. I think yeah. for another one. And that was also a great market. Yeah. Busy, busy, busy. So yeah. Is there a crash? Are we going to have a crash? Man, I wish I could tell you. I know. Me too. <laughs> I would love to call all of the buyers we know and be like, no, wait a couple more months and we got this. And that's not going to happen. And we can't do that. No, that's not going to happen. Right. It's just, yeah. it's just not realistic. Right. Sure. I was just talking to someone this morning, one of our clients who's planning, they're planning their house to come onto the market, right? And that was the conversation we had. And then I was talking about one of our clients back in 2000 or just before COVID-19 hit, just before we had just signed the listing contract in January and we were going on the market in uh, mid-March, Oh my gosh. Right. Exactly. when it Yeah. Hit. And why couldn't we go on right away? Right. Because we had to prepare to we, get ready. Yeah. Right. The house was know. not showable Yeah, because this family, this person that was selling his home wanted it to look its best. So we got it ready. And so when we got it ready, it took about 90 days to get it ready. Yeah. Right. Which is not unreasonable. Some people can do it quicker and some can do it a little shorter or faster and then longer. The reality is COVID-19 hit just as he was getting ready to come on the market. Yeah. And he said, oh my gosh, what do I want to do? And he goes, Lori, I bought this house when the market was at its height. I said, really? And he's been there for about 10 years. Wow. And it's been like his place. And he's like, and it crashed. The market crashed after that, right? And it just started coming down and down and down and down. And he couldn't move. He just had to stay there, right? Or he could have moved. He could have short sold it, but he didn't want to do that. So yeah. he just hung out and he stayed in the house and he stayed there and he stayed there and he stayed there. And then he was finally ready. He wanted to go to St. Louis. And I said, okay. So he goes, what do you think? Should we, is the market, what should I do? And I said, look. Do you want to spend the next 10 years of your life here or do you want to spend it in St. Louis? What do you think he said? He was ready to go to St. Louis. Of course. He bought himself a gorgeous, big, huge, wonderful house on a lake with deers. And it's just gorgeous. You should see his Facebook photos. (laughs) Anyways, he's living his best life. And he's so happy that he went. And so I just say, I just say like, 
Yes, the market matters. And yes, if it's coming down. And yes, if it's going up, sure, that's all fantastic, right? But the reality is, it's where do you want to spend the next 10 years of your life? What do you want to spend doing for the next 10 years? Do you want to spend it where you're at? Great, do it. And if you don't, then let us help you make that move. Yeah. Where do you want to be quarantined? Yeah. (laughs) 100 percent right yeah so many people i have found over this last year as we've been working through this is there were some people who weren't happy where they were quarantined and so we sold their house right we've We've seen a lot of that a lot of families last year and i mean it's continuing into this year so far too yes yes and a lot of families moving into second homes yeah they want a second home so that they can have a second home to be quarantined to right Right. So there's talk about our world becoming the new normal by midsummer. There's talk about that. Right. And there's talk about like um, people getting vaccinations and getting their second set. And so I just say like, gosh, does it matter if the market's going to crash or when the market crashes? Sure. It's going to impact our economy. I mean, guess what's coming, supposedly? Guess what's coming for all those first time home buyers out there? A $15,000 credit from the government. Yeah, that would be so amazing for first time home buyers. Uh, amazing. Now we just need some incentives for sellers to want to put their houses on the market. <laughs> now us buyers have our money, but we have nothing to buy. That's the challenge right now. Is What will it take for families to make their move? Right. It's a belief in the economy, a belief in where we're going, a belief in what's going to happen, right? It's just having the faith to move to the next place that you want to move to, irregardless of whether or not the market is crashing. Look, the reality is our economy is going to be hit. We have a really high recession. I'm sorry. We have a really high unemployment rate. Yeah. It's actually higher. According to the stats I saw, it's higher than when the great recession was happening. Wow. Yeah. And still we're moving forward. Interest rates are at phenomenal lows. Do you know? Amazingly. In the eighties, you probably don't know this. You were still a baby. Well, I was watching. Are you interest rates in the 80s? What were, what were like they? 16 point, 17. Yes. Yeah, like 16%. What are you crying about at 2.75, right? 2.99, 3%. Yep. Interest rates are phenomenal right oh my now. Gosh. I and couldn't even imagine them being up at like who, credit card. Could do that. Who could buy a house with a 16, 17% interest rate? That's well, you're just insane. buying a much smaller house. That's you're, all you're doing. You're not buying a house. <laughs> you're for sure moving out of California. <laughs> it is it is the market. Well, yeah, but those interest rates are well, gonna be anywhere, right? Right, right. You, know, you do, you get a lot more house though you get, when you get yeah. out of California. Yeah. And that's the reality is we have so many people that are on their way out. Mm-hmm. And they're not staying. And we do have a lot who are coming. Right? Right. Right. So is the market going to crash? Who knows? Right? You just watch the stats and you pray for the best. I believe in the good Lord upstairs. He takes good care of us. He carries us through. We just have to honor him in what he says and does. I live in that faith. I live in that belief. And then I just make wise financial decisions. Right? Right. If the market comes down and people lose their equity, we go into short sales. We go into foreclosures. There are none. none. There's like a quarter I, of a percent. I haven't seen one in years. Years. Yeah. years. Yeah. It's very unusual to find a foreclosure and even more unlikely to find a short sell. What's a short sell, you ask? When your house is no longer worth what your mortgage was. That's kind of scary. So say you bought your house for six fifty, but now it's only worth three fifty. Ouch. Yeah. That's called a short sell. And there's nothing short about it. Yeah. 
<laughs> it's a long they process. Ever long process. So, from two girls who have just been working the real estate market for a bit, I've been through myself one crash to what everyone keeps saying is another crash. Like, look, it just depends on where you want to be and what you want to accomplish. And how you want to do it. Life gets tough. We get recessions. We have recessions. We are in a recession. Yeah. And you just make it through with whatever you have the best that you can and you rebuild. So what's my recommendation? Talk to a professional. They're going to tell you your house is going to sell in like two hours. So is it a great time to sell? You better believe it. Yeah, for sure. Is it a great time to find another house? Well, it's not so easy right now. <laughs> <laughs> and we can still make it happen. Yes. I have clients that I spoke with this morning, and that's exactly what they said. They said, we're getting out of California. We're moving to Texas. That's where everyone's going these days, Texas. Yep. Right? We're moving to Texas. And everything that's selling in Texas is going for like 30, 40, and 60,000 over their price point. Their list price? Wow. Yes. So they're having that conversation with their professional in Texas right now. Yeah. Because they need to move sooner here to keep their price point down over there. Wow. Okay. Right? Mm -hmm. Just got to think about where you're going. Talk to all the professionals that are involved and go, okay, what's what makes best sense for us? Well, us over at Lori Alvarez and team will give you our honest recommendation. For you, not for us, for you, we will do that 110%. I'm selling a house today that this family asked me nine years ago, hey, should I sell it? And I drove all the way out there and I saw them and I said, no, now's not the time. It doesn't make sense. The market's still going to rise. Now, when it comes down, do we know we when it comes down? We have no idea. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> I wish I, we did. You know what I did see to yesterday, what came on the market? And I'm kind of just watching this, engaging this, right? Because I did see a little townhouse in Laverne come on the market at $10,000 less than the same townhouse I sold not less than seven months ago. Oh, I know what, I know what area you're talking about. Yeah. $10,000 less. Wow. Now, it'll probably sell yeah. Yeah. for $30,000 more. And I thought that was kind of interesting that it was priced lower than the house I sold seven months ago. Did you see the interior of this? Not yet. No, no photos inside? But do you remember the interior of ours? Yeah. Yeah. Purple walls? That's right. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> so I'm just saying... <laughs> Do we know where the market's going? No. No. No, we, we don't. don't. What we do know is that if you're ready to buy, sell, or invest in real estate, we're ready to help you make that move forward. And if you have a property you're considering selling, I don't know. I'd probably get on it right now because the market's super amazing For when sure. you put it on the market. Definitely. I mean... I could put a billboard up that says, I'll sell your house for 110% more than I listed it for. And you could totally deliver that. <laughs> In this market, you better like, believe you it. You really can guarantee that right now. <laughs> I can't guarantee it because that's just what the market's doing. And of course, there's a stipulation next to that that says, as long as you priced within value. Right. You know, right. and the reality is you're still going to sell for more. That's just what the market's doing right now. So what would you give to a buyer? Give your one buyer recommendation right now. Um, a strong lender, a yeah. strong realtor like us. Yes. Strong team, a lot of support, and um, buyer specialist yes. for sure right now. Yeah. You, you, you just, you need that protection. You're already overbidding on a home, so you don't want to give up everything else that you can negotiate. Right. So buyer's agents are so important right now. Yep, that's why I believe in them, and I have Me too. Too. Yep, looking for another one. Yeah, we're always we want to grow. We're always growing. 
That's the reality of the market though, right? You know, you need someone who's going to fight for you, yes. someone who's going to go to bat for you, someone who's going to look out for you, someone who's going to put you first because that's our fiduciary duty as your realtor. Yes. Right? And so 110% strong lender. You need to be fully approved. Yes. 100%. Yeah. D, you approved the strongest buyer possible. And my sellers, what do you want? Well, let me tell you this. You want a listing agent who's going to do right by you. Sure, I could 100% not put your house on the market and sell it myself and probably still impress you with a $20,000 offer over list price. That's easy now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it is actually. <laughs> but getting you multiple offers that satisfy you so that maybe you don't even decide to go with the highest offer because it's the terms that matter most. The dollars are all just blessings, right? I'm just saying, make sure you interview Lori Alvarez and team before you consider hiring anyone else. We do this for the love of real estate. We do. Yeah. Yeah. Anything else? I don't think so. All right. Be sure to oh, read the blog. We have great information there. And don't miss out on our Buyers Academy. Check it out. LoriAlvarez.net. Excellent. And for, of course, the free listing consultation, or you just want to know what the price of your house is, shoot me a text, 909-227-4196. We'll get it right away for you. I'm Lori Alvarez. Amy Cruz. We'll see you next week. You're up, Irma.